Hey everybody, it's Ryan, and long time no video. So I'm currently a freshman at Drexel University studying game design, which I'm super excited about, and I think that's going to allow me to post a lot more interesting videos for you guys regarding game design. So today I'm talking about um, jetpacks, which I just recently implemented into my game. Um, I want to apologize for the lighting. I hit a bug within Unity that I can't fix until I get rid of all these default Unity cubes. And I also, I deleted a plugin called Rain, because it's for AI and I'm not using it right now. But it's actually, the font that's in that is what I'm using for my entire game, so I had to redo all the fonts, so the scaling's a bit off. So I apologize for that. So I already made a video showing you guys my customization. But I also added a panel where you could choose the game mode between cooperative or versus. And you can also choose the map, once again, the fonts is off. So, a bit of a lag because I'm recording, but should be good. So how the jetpack works is it takes into consideration how you're moving. So you can move in 360 degrees using the jetpack just like you can um, normally moving around. So I can go straight up and go to the side. And there's a bit of it of a delay to it helps the feel of the jetpack and then you can see the bar on the bottom of my backpack that is for um, like the fuel it regenerates quite quickly um, I haven't tested out exactly how quick I wanted yet because um, there's no fighting going on yet so there you saw me going straight up and then I can control which direction but I can also go pretty far like that, like so. So it's um, it's quite the tool, I'd say, and it's going to change the gameplay a lot. Um, another example is you can throw a grenade, then go backwards, like so. And the particle effects are quite cool, I think. And let me just show you all the directions we go forward, back, and such. So I'm going to show you guys what this looks like in the animator and what it looks like in code so you can kind of replicate how I did it. Um, if you're new to this series, what I do is it's not a click for click tutorial. I kind of just explain the brief overview. So if you're like intermedi intermediate with Unity, you can replicate it um, how you want in your own game. So this is the locomotion tree. Um, ignore this, this is for a future video but this is the jetpack tree. So all I have is transition is a boolean called jetpack start which can go in from any state and then once the landed a boolean called landed returns true it goes back to the normal locomotion. So if you remembered how the locomotion works if I hit play in code I can control where this dot is so mechanism takes over on um, the character's motion. And these parameters, direction and speed, are the same parameters I used for the jetpack. So let's go over here to the jetpack tree. Um, so we have four, actually five animations. One for flying forward, one for flying back, left and right. So if I hit play, it blends nicely between these. So this really helps his um his moving feet slightly helps sell that he's flying. And the, you can see the backpack is slightly messed up because it's just the preview. So I'm gonna explain how I change these direction and speed parameters in the code. And ignore. So where are we? All right, here we are. So, um, so there are two variables called H and V. They're controlled by the joystick horizontally and vertically, or if you're using the mouse and keyboard, um, W, A, S, and D. So this feeds into the animator as the speed and direction parameter, which I use for the locomotion of the player running around, and also now for the jetpack. 
So how do I propel it? So if the character is on the ground and the jetpack isn't on, actually first I'll explain. So right now I have it on the left trigger and for the key um, keyboard it's space. So this is just saying if the left trigger is held down or if the space is pressed, then um, the jetpack will turn on or if it's false. So if the jetpack is pressed and there's uh, full fuel, then what it does is first, what's very important is to understand how mechanism works. So it usually controls the animations or the movement through the animations root motion. So in order to treat it like a normal rigid body um, for the jetpack, we have to turn that off. And that's the simple apply root motion equals false. And then once we do that, we'll be able to um, add forces to it like a normal rigid body. And that's this line here. So my RB is a rigid body. It adds a relative force to its local position. And so if you remember before, the H parameter is directly controlled by the analog stick. So we multiply that by um, a variable say like 200, I just mess these around to control how exactly far I want it to go. So this controls the horizontal, this controls the y direction upwards, which is a constant, and this controls um, vertically forward and backwards. Do, do, do. So that's initially, it gives it an extra boost right as the player hits it. And then once they're in the air, they can also control what direction they're going in. And that's what this is. So if the jetpack is in the air and the trigger is also held down, then it adds that relative force, again, using the different parameters. What's next? What's next? Um, this is simply controlling the jetpack fuel on the backpack. This is controlling if they let go, then play the void, stop jetpack. And what also is very important is how to calculate when the character is on the ground. So you can tell the animator that they're on the ground. And what I did is I use a system of ray casts. So I shoot a short ray cast from the player's feet down to the ground. And if they hit, then they're on the ground. But what would happen is, I guess it's best to show you in the editor. So if you shoot a raycast directly from the middle of his feet and he lands on a corner like this, then the raycast isn't going to hit um, the platform and the player is actually going to be stuck because they're stuck in the jetpack animation and they can't move. Um, so what I did to solve that is instead of shooting one raycast, I shoot three from his feet, and there's a slight offset to him, um, so there's a wider range, so he doesn't land on corners like this. And in the code, this is what it looks like. Um, I don't shoot all three every single frame, just for optimization sake, so I just switch it. Um, so one frame will do one, two, three, then goes back to one, two, three, so it's only shooting one every frame. And it's just a switch, a simple switch statement. So, so this is the cone that shoots the um, raycast down, and if it finds a hit, um, this is just saying to make sure the raycasts don't actually hit the feet. Um, alpha is just the tag I have on the player's hitbox, so it doesn't think its feet is the ground. And if, and this is just saying, if the ray is really short, then the player is on the ground and it stops the jetpack. It switches the animation um, bools around, and also is important to apply the root motion back so the player can move when um, they do their normal animations. Doom doom. So I guess that's all. 
um, code wise I can show you what it looks like in split screen I'll just do yellow and red I guess is good let's see so it works with both controllers um, I showed you guys before how to set up split screen or at least I explained it um, the jetpack the particle effects look pretty cool you can see the smoke effect and I think the sound should be coming through hopefully that doesn't get messed up yep. so I've been contemplating putting jetpacks in the game for a while and Star Wars Battlefront the beta like really inspired me to do it but that's more of like a jump pack and you don't have much control after you hit the button um, but this one for example in like Star Wars or whatever if you wanted to get on top of this ledge you'd probably have to back up because the angle that shoots out is so harsh but um, I wanted to add more control so we can do is go straight forward and to the side like I did so it's just like again gives the um, player more control over the character um, but still there's a slight delay to it so it still feels like you're I'm um, using this like powerful jetpack uh, so I guess that's it kind of rambling on at the end a little bit and I'll see you guys next time. And actually, I'm going to explain a little bit what I'm going to talk about next time. Uh, what I've been working on is... Where is he? Oh. Here. I've been working on a revive system. So when the players are playing cooperatively, they don't just die. But when they get attacked by the AI, they actually get knocked down. So you can see this um, little HUD element popped up. And it says to revive, so you can go over and hit A, and then they slowly get back up, and they're ready to go. And that is one topic for the future, and I'll see you guys later.